Hello, it is July 24th, the year of our Lord, Yeshua. Um, I'm just doing this real quick because, you know, I'm feeding my son. That's, uh, he eats through a G-tube. I'm feeding him right now, so I can't really do much. I'm stuck here. I'm immobilized, if you will, and I'm watching, you know, news. I'm watching Fox News right now. And so I have to change the station because all they're talking about is race relations in America. And I'm like, I can't watch this garbage no more. I mean, do we really have a major racial problem? No, we have a, a, a government problem in America today. We have a, a church not recognizing scripture problem in America today. I mean, we have an immorality problem in America today. We don't have a race relations problem. You fix the first two <clears throat> while you fix the... The church problem and all other problems will be solved. They just will. I mean, they just will. For those of you, what are you, like 70% who call themselves Christians, that's a very <clears throat> ridiculously uh, overstated number. These people who are claiming to be Christians are not really Christians, okay? The majority of Americans who claim to be Christians don't even know what it means to be a real follower of Christ, okay? I mean... I'm still learning so much, and I feel I've learned a lot in the last four or five years, but I mean, I have a long way to go. If I have a long way to go, and I've been plugging myself in because I'm a stay-at-home dad and I have the time to do it, what does that say for those of you who are working 8 to 12 hours a day, and then when you get home, <clears throat> you do nothing concerning scripture, and you watch TV, which is understandable, you're tired, but if you're not doing the research, how can you call yourself a Christian if you're not following the commandments of God. I mean, to me, this is just amazing. It's just amazing that this stuff's going on, and uh, and people are just clueless. You know, they watch news and they they believe this stuff is true. This garbage that they see on the news. I'm just I'm fed up with this. I'm really fed up. I have five boys. I have numerous amounts of of nephews and a niece and you know I have I have family that I'm concerned about my own family doesn't get it a lot of my own family members don't get it so it's important that you know we understand what's going on you can hear my munchkins in the back going crazy it's important that we know uh, you know what's really going on in the world and that we fix it we really need to fix gotta get them to shoo out of here <laughs> we really need to know what we need to do to fix things and it starts with the church we have, we have, we have Calvary chapels, and, and that's one of the biggest churches. It's one I was a part of. I've been to Baptist churches. I've been to Four Square churches. I've been to other churches, but the Calvary Church is one of the biggest in America. The Calvary Chapel Network, and being that I've come out of them from being there for like twenty years, and I still, uh, I love the people who go there. I just don't care for the leadership. They're garbage. They're, they're hypocrites or vipers. And uh, they don't believe in truth. And I've talked to a lot of different people that attend Calvary and, and are in the inner circles of some of these pastors. And what I'm hearing, what I've been hearing, is that these pastors, from numerous people I've been hearing this, that these pastors are waiting for Chuck Smith to die before they make changes. And a lot of them will probably make changes even worse than what they're already doing now. You know, so it's, it's even worse. It's going to be even worse. The things they're going to change too. From this already corrupted system that they have, it's going to get worse. So, what do we do? People, you go you go to Calvary Chapel. I know a lot of you hate that I say this stuff. And you, you don't like me. Oh, you're you you're attacking and you're, you're causing division. Look at, I'm not throwing nobody out. When when the church throws someone out, that's them causing division. When someone raises questions, that's that person being concerned about the truth in scripture. Understand the difference. Understand the two. I was kicked out for raising up questions, not disrupting uh, a sermon, not for uh, causing any problems with the pastor, other than having him do some research he didn't want to do. All I did was ask questions on off hours when nobody was there except the staff. This is what I did. So, you know, if 
If someone's asking questions, do you just shoo them away like a fly? No, you answer the questions. We're called to answer questions. Stop worshiping your pastor. Well, I don't worship a pastor. I don't worship a pastor. What you say and what you do are two different things. Just because you say you don't worship him doesn't mean that you're not worshiping. Muslims claim that they don't worship Muhammad. Yet, they worship Muhammad because if you say anything bad about Muhammad, they will kill you. That's worship. Muhammad means, what does it mean? The praised one? I mean, why is a man the praised one? See, what you say doesn't matter if what you do are the actions of a worshiper. You worship your pastors, not the word of God. I'm telling you this because I was there. I unknowingly was worshiping a pastor and repeating the things he would tell me over what scripture says. I was wrong. And so are you. If you're going to go and comment to me like, oh, you're saying this about my pastor. I happen to know him. He's a great guy. Bull crap. No one is good. Not one. Not one of us is good. Do I say that? Or is that what the Bible said? Jesus asked the guy because the guy said, oh, you, you're, uh, what did he say? Uh, you're good. Or you're, I, I forget the exact terminology he used, but a reference as to Jesus being good. And he says, why do you call me good? He asked him why. Because why would you call me good if no one is good? Because he's God. That's what he's basically referring to, uh, where he was getting at. But the point is, is we are not good. None of us. And if a pastor is a human being, which he is, he's no good either. So who do we go to for to learn? Well, the Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit is our pastor, our, our guide, our teacher, our rabbi, everything. God is our teacher through his spirit. You understand? Uh, oh, uh, you preach a works-based thing. I don't preach anything. The Bible says we are to do certain things. We are to act in certain ways. It's not that, it's not, we're not saved by our works. We are saved by what Yeshua did on the cross. That's how we are saved if we accept it. And if we accept it, it'll show in what we do. Do you understand that? It, we, it'll show in what we do. We're going to do something so we're either doing the will of God or we're doing the will of ourselves or the will of Satan. We're doing somebody's will. We're doing some kind of work. Even if you're not doing anything, you're doing a work. You're doing a work of a lazy person. Do you understand? You are doing some kind of a work. So don't tell me, oh, you're, you, you preach this uh, work-based faith. No, no. The Bible tells us because the Bible tells me so. Right? The Bible tells me. Get this through your heads. Your pastor is a man. Do not worship that man. If you were with him every day of the week, 24 hours a day, you would see all his flaws. But I don't care about his human flaws. What I care about is scriptural flaws. If he's giving me biblical falsehoods, it is my job as a pastor of my family to ensure that what he's saying is from the Bible. And if it is not, it's my job to bring it to his attention. And I further carry that on to see you people as my family. And it is my job also to wake my family up, to tell my family, hey, look, this is not right. This is not scripturally right. Then it is your job to examine the scripture to find out if I'm wrong or if the pastor's wrong. Or maybe we're both wrong. But it's up to you to figure it out. People say, oh, well, you're, are you trying to be a pastor? Are you trying to be a prophet? You, no. No, if there was any title I would ever accept, and I don't like titles, but if there was one, it would be Watchmen. I watch what's going on in our world, and I, and I see what the Bible tells us about what's going on in the world. And what do I do? I try to let people know. That's a Watchman. I was a Marine. I am a Marine. I did a lot of guard duty. I watched. I observed. And if I needed to, I'd call a react team. React, react. And they'd come. They'd come within a minute. They're there. Guns ready to go. You understand? I'm just warning people. And it's up to you to heed the warning. If I, if I am sent by God to do this one little thing just to warn people, if I am and you ignore me, are you ignoring me or are you ignoring God? That's all I'm saying. If I'm not of God, then scripturally you look at what I'm saying 
And then you can write me off if it's not of God. But if it is, if it is, then we should get together and we should learn this stuff more in, in depth and detail together. This is what we're called to do. To study the scriptures. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying if you're in a church where they're teaching falsehoods, but you enjoy the fellowship of other people, you need to get out of there. Either confront them, if you're bold enough to, which you should be bold enough to, to stand for the scriptures, to stand for God, go and question them. And if they end up kicking you out, they kick you out. So what? You have real brothers and sisters in Christ that are here to, to, to get you through all those type of situations. I had great brothers and sisters in Christ that have helped me. I have great ones now. Great ones now that we have Bible study on Saturdays and our group is small. But amazing people. Amazing from Texas. From, from Australia. From Indiana. I mean, you name it. We have them. And it's growing. I have guys from Tennessee that want to get part of this. You know, other Californians. Other people who go to Calvary Chapels come to the Bible study. They know the truth. They see it. They see it. We're all doing the work for God. We just want this information to get out there. So I pray, I pray in Yeshua's name that all of us together will see the truth. Because once we do, you know, we get our churches back to speaking truth, we get our nation back. And our children have a great future ahead of them. And they're well prepared for the coming of our King. Well prepared. Don't tell me about your doctrinal thoughts, what you've been taught by a pastor. Read the scriptures for yourself and tell me what you come up with. Read it for yourself. Our group does amazing studies. They, they correct me if they see me wrong with something. I accept it because I trust them. I trust because I know they study scripture. I know they dig into it. If they feel something I'm saying is not right, they'll dig in. They will dig in. And that's why I trust them when they confront me with something because I know they've done the research. And then we'll go over it together. We'll go over it together and we'll find out what the truth is. You have to be able to accept rebuke and give it when necessary. It's time we start, you know, following scripture the way God intended us to. All right, so this is just something I had to get out there. I hate hearing about all this stuff. The news is garbage. Turn the TVs off. You know, get out your Bibles, read your Bibles. Look online, research, you're going to see people that are talking crazy stuff, but then you at least you can research and see what people are, at least are saying. So when you maybe run into one of these crazies out on the street, you say, no, no, you're scripturally wrong, and this is where, and this is where. You got Jehovah Witnesses who do a lot of studying, you got Mormons who do a lot of studying, who come to your door. How do you combat that? A lot of the stuff they say is true. A lot of what they're saying is scriptural. They do that so they can knock you off your game, because they probably know the scriptures better than you. There's so much information out there. Jesus said, or Yeshua is his real name, said, Seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given. Ask him for the truth and he will show it to you. Seek and he will give it to you. Okay? God bless you guys. If you have any comments, send them to me here on, the, on my YouTube. Or you can, you can uh, get a hold of me. I'm under Marine Veteran. I'm wearing my Marine Corps cover. Right, the one I would be wearing my dress blues, that white cap. I'm wearing that, and underneath I have another black cap, and in white letters says "Infidel" right underneath here. Okay, Marine veteran. You could find me on Facebook. Um, same thing on on Twitter. It's a uh, Defend the USA one and Defend the USA two. It's Defend the USA and Defend the USA two. I have two different Twitter uh, handles there. You can reach me on, and then the U YouTube USMC nine one seven six. Okay. I hate having to, to go off on the Calvaries, but I hate that they're not speaking the truth. And what did, what did uh, our Lord say? The truth shall set us free. God bless.